Right, beauty. That rainbow, that first Frenchman's Lake trout. Right there, awesome. Look at that fish, look at that monstrous fish. Number eight hook guys, that's about a six pound rainbow. Yes, in the net, right there. There you go. Wow, <laughs> holy crap. All right. Do you want to experience maximum success when it comes to trout trolling? If you do, integrate trolling flies into your arsenal. Go on over to fishhuntshoot.com and pick up one of Kel Kellogg's signature series trolling fly kits today and you'll be yelling fish on tomorrow. My hybrid rig, I've got three colors of lead core and I've got it backed up with 20 pound braid. I'm seeing marks at 25 to 30 feet and uh, what I did, as soon as I got down to those marks, I hooked up. So what I've been doing is, what my recipe on that last fish was, was I had out all the lead core to the backing. When I got to the backing, I reset the, uh, the line counter to zero. And then I let out 50 feet. Started off with 25 feet. Put out 25 feet of braid. That didn't work. Then I put out um, another 25 feet for a total of 50 feet, and it wasn't a minute, and I hooked that fish. So I've been marking fish in this area. I'm gonna go right back through there. I'm gonna come right back around with that depth and see if I can hook another one. Howdy folks, Cal Kellogg here. When it comes to trolling for trout and landlocked salmon, there's two pretty basic ways of getting your lure or your bait down in the water column. One is to use a downrigger, whether it's a, you know, a fancy electric version like I have on my Duckworth power boat, or a crank version like I use on my, uh, my Hobie kayak, or lead core line. Now you're very familiar with lead core line and my hybrid lead core setup if you watch the channel much because I absolutely love that rig. But today, I wanted to kick off a series of two videos talking about alternative methods to getting down, alternatives to lead core or using downriggers. And the first one I'm going to discuss, I use this all the time. It's super simple. It's still a pretty shallow application, but I use it for working depths anywhere from like the surface, you know, just under the surface down to maybe eight feet or so. I use this setup a lot when I'm trolling flies, when I'm trolling small spoons, stuff like that. And uh, it's just, I have this actually set up on one of my spinning rods. It's just a simple Carolina rig. And uh, let me take this off here. So what it consists of, if you're not familiar with the Carolina rig, I'll pull some line out here, is you just simply take a bullet weight Take a bullet weight, thread it on your main line, my main line over here, thread it on your main line, put a bead behind it, and then put on a swivel. And from that swivel, you know, run a leader anywhere from say 30 to 48 inches, tip it with a fly, tip it with a spoon, whatever. Then, you know, when you put this in the water, count it back. That's kind of you know, give you your clue as to the depth and being able to replicate it. So you might start off, if let's say, say I'm out in my kayak, I might start off with a 3 8 ounce weight like this and I might put it back 60 feet. Okay, I don't get hit. Maybe I want to go deeper. I might put it out 75 feet or 100 feet. The point is, when you do get hit, you remember how far back was I, and then you can replicate that. You know, getting down with a weight like this is all about the distance behind the boat and the speed you're trolling. So if I'm getting hit at two miles an hour, 75 feet back, you know, I'm fishing at some depth. I would guess with a setup like this, I would be down at, at those speeds at that distance about five feet. Doesn't really matter what distance you're back, once you figure out where you're getting hit, you just replicate the speed, the distance back, and you're going to be in that zone. Now, if you think the fish dropped down in the water column, 
let out a little more line or slow down a little bit and you're gonna you're gonna work down deeper to a point you know at some point you've got all this line in the water and your sinkers just not going to be able to get down any deeper so like I say, this is something that I employ when the fish are anywhere from the surface to probably eight feet deep, something like that. And I really like to use a simple setup like this when I'm trolling flies. Now, what if we want to get down deeper? It gets a little more complex. It's still very doable. Let me grab another rod here. So here we have, it's, it's actually kind of a similar setup to the Carolina rig I just showed you, but with some, some important differences. I don't have this one on a on a spinning rig. I have this one on a standard, you know, trolling rig like I would use for downrigger fishing. It's loaded with a 10 pound test fluorocarbon line, just a standard seven and a half foot trolling rod. Right here is the. Uh, let me actually let some line out of here, without without backlashing it. Kind of my home run swing sometimes. So what we have here on the business end is just a simple. Uh, just a simple lock snap like I used to attach, you know, my spoons and plugs and stuff like that. That's the end of the leader, but let's uh, let's look at this from, from the rod tip down. So here is my main line. The main line comes down to a snap swivel. That is threaded onto the main line. And as you can see, I have a one ounce pencil weight on there right now. So you, you bring your main line down through a snap swivel, through a bead, and then I have on a high quality trolling swivel. And then beyond that, I have about 48 inches a liter, fluorocarbon liter, coming down to that snap. Now I could run, you know, a trigger spoon on here, a Rapala on here, just about anything. I could even take that snap swivel off and put a threaded worm on there. I could hook on a Dodger and a, a kokanee spinner right there, you know, anything like that. But the weight up here, the weight is helping this, you know, dive down deeper in the water column. Now that's a one ounce weight. You could go with a two ounce weight. You could go with a half ounce weight. You could go with a three ounce weight. Um, the thing you need to remember when you're letting a rig out like this is you don't want to let it out real fast. You want to kind of inch it down so it doesn't kind of fall on itself and get tangled. And you also need to pay close attention to the line counter. Same concept two miles an hour, start out 50 feet back, I don't get hit, now I'm back 75 feet or 100 feet at some point, wham, I got a fish on. Okay, I know, I was back, I was going two miles an hour and I was 110 feet behind the boat. Whatever that, whatever depth I'm getting, we want to replicate that presentation and work it as long as we can, as long as we're catching fish. Now, some guys, you'll see some guys that run a three-way right here, and they'll have the weight on a short dropper. That works very well. I like my rig better simply because I feel like if I get a big fish on, and he's doing some wild runs, dives, maybe he's turning hard to the side, that weight, its ability to slide up and down the line, it helps to keep the fish from getting leverage against that weight, if that makes sense. Anytime the fish can get leverage against the weight, he can he can shake his head, he can create slack in there. And I just think that that sliding sinker effect there helps me land more fish. So typically with something like this, I'm gonna run a half ounce weight, up to an ounce, maybe two ounces, but you can go much heavier. You can get down very deep using this method. If you don't want to fuss with lead core, if you don't want to fuss with downriggers, and you don't mind fighting fish with a weight on the line like that, you can get down very deep. It's still very important to have a line counter reel. So those are two alternative methods to using downriggers or lead core line that are going to help you get down, whether you're fishing for landlocked kings, trout, kokanee anything where you want to you know do a controlled depth presentation where you want to work the water column those two rigs are going to work for you you know the carolina rig that's more of a shallow water rig um, this rig here with the sliding sinker that's more of a of a kind of a medium shallow say 10 to 15 feet all the way down to as deep as you want to go depending on how much weight you want to slap on your leader so anyway there's two alternative methods for the guys out there that don't want to use lead core and they don't want to fuss with downriggers i hope these presentations help you catch more and bigger fish this year and uh, i will be back real soon with another video on 
getting down, and I think you guys are going to find this one very sub, uh, very interesting. This is something right out of the Great Lakes. You rarely see it here in California, but I can tell you what, it works. It works great. It is a dynamite presentation, but we'll be back with that here real soon. I'm Kel Kellogg. I'm signing off. If you haven't had a chance to subscribe, please hit the subscribe button. And remember, if you're looking for tackle, particularly trout tackle, click on over to the Fish Hunt Shoot Production Store. I've got all my lines of tackle in there, rods, reels, and all kinds of good stuff like that. At fair prices, good gear stuff, I stand behind. So anyhow, I'm Kel Kellogg. I'm signing off. You have a great day, and I will catch you here real soon on YouTube. Thanks a lot, guys.